This is Valley News Live at noon. New at noon, a log home is destroyed following a fire in Ottertail County, Minnesota. Authorities say the fire started yesterday afternoon near Clitheroe on Crane Lake. When crews arrived, they say smoke and fire was already engulfing the home. The two people who live there were able to get out safely. Now the cause is under investigation, but authorities say it does not look suspicious. And we're learning new information on that downtown Fargo bank robbery. Authorities are now identifying the suspect as 57 year old Troy Maynard. Police say that he walked into a Wells Fargo along Main Avenue yesterday afternoon and demanded money. He left with an undisclosed amount of cash and was arrested about 90 minutes later. He's now in the Cass County Jail for robbery with strong arm tactics. Well, it's a bit warmer and we'll see some improvements with the temperature for the next few days, but the breeze could potentially cause some issues. So let's go to meteorologist Lisa Green with a quick look at our weather. Lisa? Well, good afternoon. Yes, it's always something here in the valley, but today is a nice day. We're looking at conditions that are quiet. We've got some areas with blue sky and sunshine, some places that have a little bit more cloud cover. The road surface is looking a lot better on our DOT views here, but just keep in mind there will always be some icy patches this time of year as long as we're below freezing. Here's a look at the latest radar and satellite map. We do have some clouds making their way through, but then there are these areas where we're nice and clear. We can make out upper and lower Red Lake there in our view right now. And and we'll kind of see more of the same essentially heading into the afternoon hours, a little bit of both. In Fargo, you can see in the distance as we're looking to the southwest that we've got a little cloud cover there, but overhead there's some sunshine. And we're currently at 11 degrees in Fargo, 11 in Grand Forks, a little bit of light snow that's been coming down in Grand Forks. Again, we've had some flurry activity going on, and that's about it. Jamestown at 17 degrees, it's 10 in Bemidji, 12 in Fergus Falls, and Devil's Lake is at 14. So a nice mild uh, start to our afternoon. And here's a look at our planner. We'll get a few more degrees up into the teens here and then kind of hold into the evening hours tonight. So nice and quiet for your Friday plans. We'll let you know what to expect for the weekend, though, coming up. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Prep well, today folks are waking up to a cold but pretty common New England morning. But by this time Sunday, it's expected to look and feel very different as folks are gearing up for what could be the biggest winter storm of the season. This area along the Massachusetts coastline here, for example, is expected to get around two feet of snow. Now, coastal residents who are well initiated, those who have been around and are used to this, are still already boarding up their homes and those who have them are bringing in their boats out of the water as the winter blast could cause a storm surge with some moderate flooding. About 40 minutes from Boston, the town of Situate, Massachusetts, is encouraging voluntary evacuations while handing out sandbags and preparing emergency vehicles across the region. Snow plows are ready to go, but get this. Many of the cleanup crews are operating with reduced staff, partly because of the pandemic. And one local crew, for example, is working with just half of the usual team, which obviously means it could take longer for roads to clear up. Now, as the storm progresses, forecasters and officials urge people to monitor the storm's track, be prepared for the worst. Even those who are used to this sort of thing, better to keep an eye out and be ready. Mola Lange, CBS News. Nantasket Beach, Massachusetts. A bridge collapsed this morning in Pittsburgh, causing several vehicles and a bus to crash down into a ravine. Ten people were hurt and three of them were taken to a hospital. All of those injuries were minor and some of them were first responders who slipped and fell. That's according to officials. There were three to four vehicles on the bridge when it collapsed and crews had to rappel down the ravine about 100 feet to rescue some people. Services are planned today for Caitlin Berry, the Sydney, Montana woman with Grand Forks ties who went missing just before Christmas. Family members say her body was found near her home last week, but police are not yet confirming the ID. A memorial service is going on this afternoon in Fairview, Montana. Berry is the daughter of Grand Forks Assistant State's Attorney Carmel Madison. A Minnesota judge is on the president's list to fill the next vacant seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. Justice Stephen Breyer is retiring at the end of his term, and President Joe Biden says he intends to nominate the first black woman to the high court before the end of next month. That vacancy could be filled by Minnesota federal judge Wilhelmina Wright, who also served on the state Supreme Court from 2012 to 2016. Wright graduated from Yale University and Harvard Law School. A key inflation measure rose last year at the fastest pace since 1982. The Bureau of Economic Analysis says inflation was up 5.8 percent between December 2020 and December 2021. Energy prices climbed nearly 30 percent and food prices rose 5.7 percent. American incomes with 
American incomes also rose with inflation, but at a slower pace. Personal incomes increased 0.3% or $70 billion last month. Meanwhile, consumer spending declined in December for the first time in months. A new study is shedding some light on the popularity of the COVID-19 vaccine booster. In a survey of more than 1,500 adults, 41% of them have gotten their booster. Among people likely to be booster eligible, 70% have gotten a booster as well. And they also found that more than three quarters of Americans have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. About one in seven adults say they definitely will not get the vaccine. And nearly a quarter of adults nationwide say they've personally tested positive for COVID-19 at some point during the pandemic. With only one week to go before the Winter Olympics, Beijing is stepping up its preparations while residents say they are looking forward to the start of the games. Workers were inspecting the structure of the famed National Stadium, where the opening ceremony of the Winter Olympics will be held on February 4th. There will be no ordinary spectators due to the coronavirus pandemic. Beijing has amplified China's already strict pandemic response measures as it tries to quash any outbreaks ahead of the Olympics, which you can watch right here on Valley News Live. Coming up at noon, there are other ways to boost up against COVID besides getting the vaccine. Plus, we may be getting a little relief from the really frigid temperatures, and Lisa is next with your weather.